In this session, we are going to explore the topic of conductive hearing loss. It is estimated that over 1.6 billion people, that's 20% of the world's population, or one in five people, experience some form of hearing loss. And hearing loss can present in many different ways and to differing extents. As we can see in this graph, the prevalence of hearing loss increases with age. But what is particularly interesting when we consider the pediatric population is how different the causal factors behind hearing loss are. We can see a much greater proportion of congenital and otitis media related causes. Otitis media is a very common cause of conductive hearing loss in the pediatric population, but there are in fact different types of otitis media. Acute otitis media is defined as an inflammation of the middle ear with either viral or bacterial origins and is most likely found in the zero to four year age range, most frequently affecting those children between two and 24 months. Otitis media with effusion is the collection of fluid in the middle ear space and often follows on from an episode of acute otitis media. OME is the most common cause of childhood hearing loss and its highest incidence occurs in the two to five year age range. Otitis media can also present as chronic suppurative when there is a chronic inflammation of the middle ear and this can also affect the mastoid cavity. This is characterized by recurrent discharge, often presenting with persistent perforations and has a bacterial and fungal origin. And this can often be the precursor for cholesteatomas. On the whole, otitis media is generally a transient condition resolving either spontaneously or with some form of clinical intervention. When left untreated or in its chronic form, however, the physical effects can be long lasting. And even in its temporary format, the effects of the resulting hearing loss can also be detrimental to childhood development and speech and language skills. There are also other forms of conductive hearing loss, which are not as prevalent as otitis media, but can present with more significant hearing loss and be longer lasting or even permanent. Otitis media typically affects the middle ear cavity, the eustachian tube and the tympanic membrane, which can also be affected by perforation independently of otitis media. Certain conditions such as trisomy 21 or cleft palate can lead to increased likelihood of developing otitis media. Also within the middle ear space can be found the three ossicles, which can be affected by ossicular discontinuity, whereby some disconnection of the ossicular chain has occurred, or otosclerosis, in which abnormal bone growth causes stapes fixation. Both of these conditions can affect tympanic membrane mobility, but differently. Another form of conductive hearing loss is microtia and atresia, which affects the outer ear rather than the middle ear directly. Microtia describes a malformation of the pinna and can range in extremity from having a smaller pinna than normal to the complete absence of the pinna. Atresia refers to the absence of the ear canal and can occur independently of microtia. However, microtia is commonly associated with atresia because both the pinna and the ear canal develop at the same time during pregnancy. Microtia and atresia are congenital conditions and can occur in isolation or with other craniofacial anomalies or as part of a syndrome such as Goldenhaar's, Treacher Collins or hemifacial microsomia. As we are starting to see, conductive hearing loss can take many forms and presentations and have a range of different causes and origins. A conductive hearing loss could be temporary or it could fluctuate. It could also be progressive. We see permanent conductive hearing losses, which can be the end result of a progressive condition, or a permanent conductive loss could be congenital and present from birth. One final type of conductive hearing loss to consider is the mixed hearing loss category, where there is a conductive hearing loss in addition to a sensory neural hearing loss. Once again, these mixed hearing losses or conductive overlays can be permanent, congenital, temporary or progressive. A very common example is a child with a sensory neural hearing loss who develops otitis media with effusion, 
OME can affect children with normal underlying hearing and those with sensory neural hearing losses to the same extent. We will spend some time exploring the challenges of managing these conductive overlays today. In this session, we will start by exploring the diagnostic toolbox and the tests that are available and useful when assessing conductive hearing losses. We will then turn our attention to some case study examples to look at how to utilize these tests for the diagnostic process. Then we will start to consider the different management options available for conductive and mixed hearing losses. And we will hear from a bone conduction hearing implant specialist about these implantable devices. Finally, we'll hear from a long-term hearing aid user with a conductive hearing loss. And we will explore how best to manage patients with mixed hearing losses who have acoustic hearing aids.